Hey guys, it's Addie and I am back to you with another book review and this is book number 12 out of 50 and so um, I took a couple weeks off, not a couple weeks off, but I've been reading this book for the last three weeks. Um, this book was really, really complex to wrap my brain around and actually made me angry at some points and actually made me think and actually made me do further research. Like this was one of those books where um, I couldn't just sit through and read it and be like, oh, I get it. Like, no, like he wrote in Latin and he wrote very like complex. And so, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Cause like I picked this book up and I thought I knew what it was about. And I thought I knew what I was going to be reading, but it turned out to be the complete, um, not complete opposite, but just very different than what I thought it was going to be. So the book that I've been reading uh, is called Answer to Job, and it's by Carl Jung, or Jung, I don't know how to pronounce it, and this is said to be one of his most controversial works. So I'm going to go ahead and read the back and then tell you what my experience was with this book. So, Answer to Job is considered one of Jung's most controversial works. Answer to Job also stands as Jung's most extensive commentary on a biblical text. Here, he confronts the story of the man who challenged God. He's talking about Job. The man who experienced hell on earth and still did not reject his faith. Job's journey parallels Jung's own experience as reported in the Red Book, Liber Novus, of descending into the depths of his own unconscious confronting and reconciling the rejected aspects of his soul. So, where do I start? Um, so this is obviously written by a psychiatrist, psychologist, um, and Jung deals with the unconscious a lot and talks about the um, different archetypes. And so that's his perspective and what he brought to the field of psychology. And so um, I know I took psychology was my um, degree for undergrad. And so that's why I picked this up. I was like, oh, the Bible and psychology, let's like smash it together. It's going to be great, right? Um, but it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be. And so as I was reading this book, it was only 108 pages, which is not a lot. Um, like I've told you guys before, I'm a really fast reader. And so this book was not long by any means, but it was deep. It was rich. It was full of so many complex things that I was like, ah! like it was too much. Um, when I started reading this book and when I started really sitting with it and trying to hear his perspective on Job. But before I go into that, um, basically, for those of you that don't really aren't familiar with the Bible, Job is a man in the Bible who pretty much gets the biggest test of all time, where his children die, his farm, his lands, everything's taken from him and destroyed. Even he comes down with some boils and sicknesses. And um, his friends, his wife are saying, you need to just curse God and die. Obviously, he is left you here and he's forgotten you and you know he's not real etc cetera, etc cetera. um and so basically god is talking satan kind of says well look at your servant job and look at how he is and you think he's so good and that he's going to serve you and love you forever i bet you if you take x y and z away from him he would curse you and so that's the premise of this book in the bible is that the story of job and holding on to his faith and asking these questions of God and God revealing who he is to Job and God um, declaring who he is and telling Job, you know, all the things, all the mysteries and hidden secrets and Job kind of just sitting there and like, oh, and like taking it, not just the physical things, but um, kind of being put in a place of this is who I am and this is who God is. And so, sorry, my dog. Um, yes, because of you, Hamilton. <laughs> sorry about that I'm back and Sean's gone this weekend and so it's just me and Hamilton he's getting to some trouble so he's going to join us for the remainder of this video um so the story of Job and of God revealing who he is to Job and Satan kind of having to sit back and watch as 
all of these horrible things happen to him. Like, they're not great. They're not like, oh, a little trial test here. It is his whole life that is uprooted, shaken. Um, imagine the most horrible thing that could happen to you times a billion is what happened to him. Um, and so at the end of the book of Job, God blesses him like, more than he had before, even double or more than he had before. And so Young's issue with the Bible and Young's issue with the book of Job specifically is that if God is all loving and all powerful and all kind and gracious, how could he do this horrible thing to him? How could he be such a violent vindictive is what he was saying, God. And so his perspective on the Bible is from the aspect of well, his only way to reconcile um, what had happened to Job and who people say God is, is that God has to have these two sides to him or these other personalities. Or, and he's kind of arguing amongst himself in the book. It's a very emotionally written book. Um, even he said, it's not logical. This is just my emotions on this chapter of the Bible. And I'm just talking about it and expressing it. Um, and so within it, he ends up talking about um, the book of Revelation, which, as you know, is the book of the end of times and the end of days. And um, the book of Revelation was written by John. And so he kind of breaks down uh, John, one of the disciples of Jesus, and where he was at and why he was writing these things. And um, if you do your research, and like, I had to do my research because I've I've been a Christian my whole life. And there's some things I still didn't even know, which was shocking. When I read this book, I was like, that can't be right, or this can't be right. And then when I went back to read, I'm like, oh, man, like, I need to, like, look more into this stuff. And um, I won't get so much into the book, but basically what I got from it is, one, you should always read something that contradicts what you believe in. And I say this uh, with, like, a caution tag above. Um, I believe you should read something that is maybe counteracting your beliefs because you want to be able to see, is this something I really believe fully deep down inside? And you need to put things in context. And that's what I had to do with this book. I had to put things in context because when I first started reading, I was just getting really angry. I'm like, how could he, of course God's good. And of course he's loving. And why would he write this? And he doesn't know anything. And I was blocking myself from actually learning more about um, his perspective of why he thought that way. And once I stopped doing that, I think I actually like took a break for a week. That's why it took me three weeks because I was like, I can't pick this book up. It's, it's making me angry, you know? Um, and I had to kind of pull back and I had to be objective and I had to look at it in a different perspective. And I think for me, it's only strengthened my faith because the more you know about something, the more you get to stand in it. If you are just lying and like on the skim, the surface of, oh yeah, I believe in this and that, but you never test it. How do you know you're really, that's really the inside of you? So what I've done is basically tested my beliefs by exposing myself to something that may be controversial. Um, and I say that with a caution because there are people that, you know, it, this will really make them distraught and make them feel some type of way. Um, but I'm learning that, I don't have to like everything that um, I can learn other perspectives and not be swayed. And I can understand someone else's side and be able to look objectively and not just subjectively because I'm, like I said in one of my previous videos, I'm an emotional person. I'm reactive. I'm hypersensitive. Um, and so I've learned, he looks, <laughs> I've learned to kind of take an objective seat. And what that does is it opens you up to really be able to one, communicate different um, perspectives to other people, which I believe is super important, but it also helps you ground your beliefs in something stronger. So as I was doing my research on, you know, more of the Bible and, and it even excited me because I was like, oh, I'm learning all this stuff about the Bible I didn't know before. And I'm learning to put it in context and I'm learning who wrote what book of the Bible and I'm learning why certain books of the Bible were not included. And I'm learning different things that like have just made my brain explode in a good way. And so at the end of this book, um, I found it to be very stretching. This book stretched me so much. And for that, I give it a nine. 
Um, it didn't necessarily give me all the good feels inside. It wasn't like, oh, this is good or, you know, whatever, but it grew me as a person. Like I feel so much stronger in my beliefs. I feel so much more aware of things. And I feel like I'm now able to put things in context, bless you, put things in context in a broader sense. Um, and I'm able to pinpoint, you know, what triggers me, what doesn't trigger me. Um, and this book really helped me to, to do that, to grow in that kind of capacity. So I don't know if I would recommend it to everybody. Um, that being said, why well, I said caution, caution, like if you're going to read something that is controversial, really um, check your emotions and be aware of yourself and put things in context is so important. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So that book was, woo, it was a lot. And now I'm so excited and ready to move on to another book because that one was just like emotionally, mentally, even physically draining. Um, so I'm next, I'm going to read a book I'm super excited about. Hamilton, you look so tired and dead. It's making this whole video look so sad. Um, next, I'm going to read a book by someone that I am super excited about and that someone that um, their work is just super inspirational to me because it connects science with uh, spirituality. And um, you've probably heard of her. She's a neuroscientist. And she's also talked with, who is it, a pastor, um, and had this little thing about going back between like neurobiology and the brain and spirituality and all of that thing. So without further ado, next week I will be reading Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Leaf. And she's just somebody I've been following and I've been really interested in her work. And so I cannot wait to read this book and come back to you guys next time. I won't say next week, but next time and let you know how it went. And as always, thank you so much for watching, for listening. And I am curious, have any of you read a book or read an article or something that has been controversial for you, that has really triggered you and like made you feel like, what? Like, I'm angry at this or I'm sad about this. Like, I'm curious. Have you read something that has pushed your beliefs and pushed the boundaries and strengthened you? I'm curious. So let me know in the comments below. Hamilton's going to say goodbye. Bye. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.